Hi, it's me again. You might remember me from that YouTube video that you watched one time. My name's Alex. Welcome back to Super Danger Studios. I'm gonna make another video about the stuff that I own because that's what YouTube wants me to do. We're gonna talk about this. PRS S2 Custom 24. The most versatile guitar uh, that I own, probably. Well, what does it mean to be versatile? Hmm? Well, Webster's Dictionary defines versatile as able to adapt or be adapted to many different functions or activities. It sounds really nice. What does it mean to be, have like a versatile guitar? I mean, that, that's like a thing that people, I need a versatile guitar, man. I, I just need something more versatile. Um, when you want a versatile guitar, you want a guitar that can adapt to whatever the client wants, right? And so the client, whether you're in a band, that's your client, or you're recording for um, you know, a producer, an artist, or whatever, that's your client. So whatever they want will dictate what versatile means. You in your bedroom playing whatever you want, that doesn't mean versatile. That just means I want a lot of guitars. And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But really when someone says I need a versatile guitar, they're saying I'm in situations where a lot is expected of me sonically. And I need a guitar that can keep up with that so I don't have to keep changing out guitars. Um, or at least it's a situation where I cannot change out guitars, right? I'm on stage or... Uh, we only have two hours in the studio, so I can't be running around setting up different guitars. There's really two kinds of versatile guitars. There's a Strat that pretends to be a Les Paul, and there's a Les Paul that pretends to be a Strat. That's it. There's no real middle ground. I mean, there's like hot tellies, right? Um, but, but, but really, those are the two things. And this is the latter. This is the Les Paulish guitar trying to sound like a Strat. And it gets the job done. I bought this guitar when I was on tour with this uh, cover band called Hello Weekend. Um, I played like, I think 20 shows with them over the summer. And it was perfect because the songs went from 80s to Motown to pop to you know, top 40. Um, and there's no guitar changes, songs went like that and that and that. You gotta be ready, you gotta be snappy, you gotta be peppy. And so I had a guitar that could do all those things, right? And, you, I mean, and it was perfect for that. Versatile, it was a versatile guitar. Now, um, a lot of the criticisms of a versatile guitar is that it doesn't sound exactly like a Strat. It doesn't sound exactly like a Les Paul. You're right, because it's not a Strat and it's not a Les Paul. And that is the trade-off you make. You know, life's all about trade-offs. So if you're trading off, like, is it close enough to a single coil that no one will say anything? Yeah, it, it is. Like, will the band or musical director of Hello Weekend, are they going to say anything about like, oh, uh, your single coil tone doesn't really sound like it? No, they're never going to say that. It's like, do you nail, are you close enough? Is anyone going to notice? And really, when you're in a band, singer is the only thing that matters. If you're a guitarist, you're just, you're just there for eye candy. Huh? Right. But let's talk about this guitar and why this is, I think, a very versatile guitar. Um, and I think you should take a look at it. I got it from Sweetwater on a crazy price match deal. <laughs> Um, before they jacked up the price, they, these things used to be uh, like sixteen hundred. I think you can still find them on Reverb for sixteen, but I got it for less than that. Thank, thank you, Reverb. There are four things that like you would want out of a guitar, right? You want a great single coil tone. You want a great bridge solo, like a ripping solo tone. You want a good like funk rhythm kind of tone, funky. And then you want like some kind of eighties hard rock. Tone, again, if you're being versatile, it's, it's usually the four. Out, there's really outside of those four, like now you're just like splitting hairs. Those are the four main areas that a guitarist would need to like insert itself, insert themselves into a song, right? Where like they hear, like the, the crowd is listening. Here comes that solo. It's one of those four. It's like a funky tone, a shredding tone. It's a nice classic rock solo tone or a single coil tone. <laughs>
Does this make does this make the cut? Uh, let's let's compare it, right? You guys want to compare it? Well, everyone wants to compare it because everyone wants to say it doesn't sound quite like it. I'm like, ah, who cares? I think it sounds close enough. Let's do single coil. Okay, so not a true single coil. And actually the way PRS works, I don't think they actually even split their pickups. I think they just tap them. So it's like a underpowered humbucker and they do some treble bleed stuff on it, right? But close enough? Yeah, I think so. It passes the test in my, for my ears, right? Now, the other things that preclude it from becoming a fully strat thing is the mahogany set neck, right? The, the, a lot of the tone from a strat comes from the bolt on neck. Um, so I'm sure uh, the CE24 sounds closer if you really are dying for that. But you're also going to be losing some of that resonance and sustain um, when you do like humbucker kind of stuff. And then the other one for, for a 24. So this is actually where I do regret. I should have gotten the custom 22 because the pickup distance from here um, it's just a little bit further, which means it gets, it's a little bit more high mid. There's not as much bass resonance. Again, most people will never notice. In fact, I can't notice, but in my head, I'm like, um, it's just not a true bassy kind of tone. But so let's do a series in the middle and do some country twang tones. <laughs> Okay, and last, let's do some rock and rock tones, right? Rock and roll. And we're gonna compare it to the PRS, my single cut, 245. <laughs> Bye. 
So good rock tones, right? Um, these are supposed, <laughs> again, my sales engineer who actually was fired <laughs> from Sweetwater. I don't, he told me that these were 5815 S's, which are the import 5815s. I was like, there's no custom 24. They, they never made them with these. He's like, no, I swear they are. I'm like, all right, dude. So who knows? Maybe these are the 5815s. They sound, they don't sound quite as much clarity as obviously the, those, that single cut. That single cut is like the best sounding bridge tone ever, but they're close enough. Again, is it close enough? Definitely. You know, and, and so as you can see from those comparisons, this is closer to a Les Paul than this is to a Strat, right? So what are the positives? I mean, like PRS gets a bizarre amount of, not hate, but like it gets weird criticism from guys who would never buy it anyway. You know, it's like guys saying like, oh, I don't like motorcycles. Like, oh, have you ridden one? They're like, no. Like, okay. So who cares? Who cares what you think, dude? Um, like PRS is, uh, I love their necks. Like, and I've played a whole bunch of necks and I, I love their necks. They're, 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 in my mind, they're the most comfortable necks of any guitar. Number two, these things, like th this is the bre best bridge in electric guitars. There's not, a, there's not a better bridge. You can smash these with dive bombs. And, I, and that, we were playing three hour shows, never went out of tune. None of my guitars can do that. Um, the intonation is, was, again, like, I haven't even gotten this set up. It's like, it was great out of the box. Um, no, but very few guitar makers can actually say that. And then it's light. It's like eight pounds, seven pounds. I mean, again, if I'm thinking for like the working musician, like if you're on tour, like this is, just a, it's a great guitar to have. Versatile. Let's say versatile again, versatile. Okay, but there are some downsides. Um, one is this volume knob. It is way too close to the bridge pickup and I hit it all the time. And since it's so light and smooth and buttery, I will knock it down a little bit. And we were using an XFX wireless system. And if you pull even a little bit volume off, we're talking latency and all sorts of other problems. So that was one thing that um, got a little tricky with this guitar, you gotta be very precise if you're, again, like it was because we were running around, we we're doing dance moves where you move the guitar and crap like that. Um, and then the last one is the pickups. They're good, they're good pickups. They sound, I mean, you hear what they sound like. They sound really good, but they're not perfect. And I would probably upgrade them to Fralin unbuckers. I love those. Um, those would be a great like single coil humbucker trade-off. <clears throat> so who would ever wanna buy this thing, right? Um, dentists, right? That's the joke. Oh, a dent a dentist guitar. What's who's got anything against dentists? Dentists clean your teeth. Every studio I've been to, there's always like a custom 24 there because the bands who bring in their guitars, they're never in tune. They don't stay in tune. There's something wrong with the pickups. And a custom 24 can get close enough to any tone that you would normally want within rock reason. And it's like the fix. It's like the ultimate fixer. Every studio I've been in has just like a custom 24 just hanging out. Um, there's a reason for that. The people who make their money recording and tracking guitars have a custom 24 in their arsenal. They just do. Everyone knows it. They just know it. That's the fix it guitar that fixes things because your custom, your custom shop strat, it's going to go out of tune. Like your 59 gold top, like something's wrong with the tone, the tone knob on it. It's like all your guitars have problems. That custom 24 doesn't have problems and that doesn't make it cool, right? Because you want to struggle, you want some kind of story about it. Oh, this thing never works, right? But if you want a guitar that's reliable, if your job depends on music, the Custom 24 is the guitar for you. And the reason that the S2 is great because it has, you know, it's made in that same factory in Maryland, um, but it, it uses uh, import electronics, right? It, so it's import, it's import pickups and import electronics on the inside. So that, there's some drawbacks there, but it's like, you're getting a lot of guitar for the money. Um, and you don't have to worry about like dinging in on stage because it's not, you know, five thousand dollar guitar. So the studio guy needs this guitar. The other guy that needs it, it's the cover band guy. This would be this or like a, you know, an HSS like Nash or Sir. I mean, those two guitars like you cover almost everything, um, with the exception of like true Teletones. You know, like I like everything that I said earlier. It's like cover those four bases of guitar, and you're good to go. I mean, is this what YouTube has come to? I just show you the stuff that I own <laughs> and then I review it. Okay, that's fine. You, you tell me. Um, 
I've been, I was uh, sick for the last month like everyone else in the world. Uh, but now I'm back and I'm hoping to engage with you guys on a more personal and emotional level. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll get the next one out maybe in a couple weeks. Who knows? If I don't get sick, 